Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how you can take a whole bunch of 15 second exposures of M51 and turn it into this. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. Okay, to begin, this is my setup. I have an old Celestron C8 mounted on an Orion Sirius mount. Both of those things I bought used. And you may be wondering, isn't that C8 a little bit too big for that mount? And you'd be right. So what I want to do is image some galaxies, but the focal length is just way too long for the mount that I have, unless I keep the exposures very short. And so what I did was I decided to do some electronically assisted imaging, and I went ahead and it streamed it on YouTube. And you can see that those streams on the channel. Now you may be asking yourself, how can you possibly image anything with just 15 second exposures? And to answer that, I would say one, M51 is a very bright target. And two, stacking is going to increase the signal over time. And eventually you'll get a good image as long as you're getting some signal into the camera. To prove those two points, let's real quick look at how the image quality changes over time during the live session stacking that I did a week ago on YouTube. As you can see, as the number of images increases, the galaxy is becoming clearer and clearer. And so what I ended up with about 971 light frames at 15 seconds each, which comes out to about four hours of data. Now let's see how I took those data and made a nice image out of it. Okay, so the first step is we're going to load all of our files into Cyrillic. And if you're not familiar, familiar with Cyrillic, it's basically a program that can help you organize all your files before you stack them. It'll create all the scripts that you want, and then it'll run the scripts in Cyril for you so that you don't have to do all of that individually within Cyril. It makes the processing a little bit more automated and, and more simple. Having come from Deep Sky Stacker to Cyril, I find that Cyrillic is a way to get the best of both worlds. So in Deep Sky Stacker, there are tabs that you can add for each session that you gather data. And it's really intuitive in terms of how, how to add the files and stack the files. In Cyrillic, uh, it's a way that gives you an, a different GUI that can do that for you. And I'll show you what I mean. So. Once you download Cyrillic, what you will want to do is you need to tell it where the serial executable file is, as well as set a working directory. So you can do that by going to File and then Preferences, and then it'll have the working directory and the serial executable. You have to set a folder that you want all of your files to be saved in, and then you want to tell where it can find serial so it can use the serial programming to actually stack the images. And once you do that, you can create, go ahead and create a new project. The first little box here, you can put in the object name, what you've been imaging. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in M52, I mean, M51. And then the number of sessions, uh, what the session name is and the number of sessions. So I imaged M51 over three nights. So I'm going to go ahead and put three sessions. And those three nights were done with my luminance data. So in terms of layers, I'm going to go down here to mono for monochrome camera and click just light. And that's going to be my luminance layer. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I also had RGB data. Those I only imaged over one night. And so I'm going to go ahead and go to project again and add light. And I'm going to go ahead and put in an R. I'm just going to put session just just S. I'm going to click OK. And now what, you've, what you can see is that it's added on this panel over here. We have a drop down for our luminance data as well as our R channel data. I'm going to do that again for the G and the B channel. So go to add light and add light for B. Okay, 
So now I've got all of that in here. What we want to do now is we can use this table here to select the either the filter or the session that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this first luminance filter. And I'm going to click on files. And I'm going to go ahead and my I'm going to add my light files and go ahead and load them in. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my flats. What's nice about Cyril is that you can apply a master dark and a master bias to each of your filters. In Cyrillic, you can add a master flat and a master bias that will be applied to each of your sessions and each of your filters. So if you used the same exposure time for all of your filters, then this is a really good option. It will help save space and make the stacking a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and go to project and then set bias and dark masters for the for all the project. And then I don't have bias in this, but I'm going to go ahead and click here and then find my master dark and add it and then click OK. And you'll see in the files tab for each of your filters that a dark frame master dark frame has been applied. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and add all of my other lights and my flats to all of these other filters. And then I'll see you in a few minutes. OK, so I've gone ahead and added all of my lights to each of the sessions and filters, as well as the flats for each of the sessions. And so you can see that I have and I generally take dark flats instead of biases. I didn't take any dark flats with this because all of my flat frames are less than one second. OK, so the next step is to go to properties and to click on each of your sessions and do a sub sky. Change this parameter for sub sky. So one nice thing about Cyril is that it will do a background extraction, a simple background extraction on each of your subframes before it stacks them, which is very useful. And one of the reasons why I like Cyril over a deep, size, deep sky stacker. OK, so now that we've got that done, we can just go back to the processes and make sure everything looks correct here. All right. Next, we want to click on actions and build directories and copy and link the images. This is just going to tell Cyril where it can find the images and how to stack them. So we're going to go ahead and run that. And that's going to take a few minutes, especially with all the data that we have. The next step is just to click on run the scripts and it'll start to run the scripts and stack the images. I'll see you in a few minutes after this is completed. All right, so it is finished. And what it's going to do is going to open up Cyril, the stacked image of my red channel. So I can just quick and do an auto stretch and see what that looks like. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is open up the luminance luminance image. Okay, and let's just go ahead and do an auto stretch. And then let's just do an auto stretch to see what we've got. OK, it looks it looks pretty nice. We've got some good detail. I still have some looks like I still have some dust that didn't calibrate out well from all the flats, but we're going to open up GIMP later and, and fix that. What I'm going to go ahead and do is go to image processing and go to star processing and star net star removal. And if you have star net installed, then you'll be able to do this. If you don't, I would go look at some other tutorials to see how you can integrate star net into Cyril, but it's, it's very easy and it's relatively painless. So I'm going to go ahead and pre stretch the linear linear image and recompose the stars on completion. And that way I can stretch the image and the stars together. So go ahead and do an execute. And once it's done doing that, it will open up two histograms. So on the left, we have the background. That's the starless image in 51 in it. And then on the right, we have the stars. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a sample to get my symmetry point. This is the, or the generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation. And I'm gonna go ahead and, so I pick my symmetry point, move this up quite a bit and start stretching. And as you do that, you can see that just the image of M51 is being stretched without any of the, the stars. Stretch it and we hit apply. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move the black point up so it darkens the background. And then I'm going to choose another symmetry point. So maybe this symmetry point will be will include some of the lighter parts of the nebula. And this will be my second stretch. I'll go ahead and, and then start stretching again. Play with the sliders a little bit to get a to get a stretch that I want. And that looks actually, I think, pretty nice. 
I'm going to click apply and now what I want to do too is I want to stretch the stars because I do want stars in the final image but all we want to do is just stretch this and then you'll start seeing the stars appear yeah that I think that looks that looks pretty good so I'm going to go ahead and apply that and then I'm going to go ahead and close it now I've got a nice stretched image here it looks pretty nice but there is a still a little bit of vignetting it looks like the flats didn't calibrate all of the vignetting out. And what we're going to, what I'm going to do is do an RBF background extraction. I think it, it works the best. Go ahead and click a few sample points all around the image. Just so it can get an idea of what the background is like. I'm going to avoid, I'm going to avoid the galaxy. And if there were a nebula here, you'd probably want to avoid any nebulosity. And then go, go ahead and do a compute background. I'm going to take this smoothing slider all the way up, compute the background, see what it looks like. And that did a, that did a really nice job. Um, you can see the image is a lot, a lot flatter now. I'm just going to take the slider and go down a little bit and do it again and see if anything changes. Changed a little bit. I'm just going to keep going down until I don't see any more changes. So I don't. Yeah, I don't see anything changing now. So click up apply. And I think this looks pretty good for an initial for an initial stretch of, of the data. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a TIFF file. What I want to do now is sharpen the image a little bit. So I've got my own special sharpening tool that I hopefully will be able to put on GitHub and anybody can download it and use it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and browse and look for for the file that I saved. And then it should start sharpening the image and I'll come back when it's finished. It'll probably take one to two minutes. All right, it's finishing up now, just loaded. Uh, you can see I've got the, the original and the preview. Save it as a TIFF. And then I'm going to open it up into... All right, here's the image and it's been, it's been sharpened. So just zoom in a little bit so you can see how much sharpening has actually happened. So here's... Here's the sharpened image, and here is the original image. And you can see it's a little bit subtle, but things have been sharpened pretty nicely and the, and the stars have been reduced to some. So if we look at the stars, they're a little bit smaller. So now that we've, we've dealt with the luminance, we're gonna go back into Serial, and then we're going to go to image processing and we're gonna find RGB compositing. And it's going to put up a a new window where we can choose the RGMB channels or the RGMB images from, from the different filters. I'm gonna go and find the final RGB. So let's go put the final R filter here, the final G filter here, and the final B filter here. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep everything as defaults, go to close, and we can click on the RGB to, to see what's happening. now. I don't like the way that things are handled in Serial in terms of like color calibration. There's there's way too much green. I think that's just mainly because of the light pollution in my area. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just save this and output it as a TIFF file. I'll just call it M51RGB. Save it, I'm gonna open it up in to GIMP. All right, so I've got the RGB image opened in GIMP. I'm gonna go ahead and Let's go ahead and give it an, an initial stretch. And as we stretch it, like there's a lot of green coming out. So, so let's keep let's keep stretching it. But instead of stretching it all at once, I'm just going to go ahead and go into the each channel individually. So I'm going to first do the red, go to, into the green channel, and then bring the dark point up, and then do that. I mean, if I do this in serial, sometimes it gives me some weird results. So I just want to get everything aligned a little bit better. You may not have this problem with your with your own data, but I just want to get everything kind of initially aligned and then I'll bring it back into Serial and then bring this back into Serial. So open it up in Serial. You can see that if we do an auto stretch now, it's a little bit more natural, not as much, not as much green. So I'm going to also go ahead and crop the image a little bit so we don't have any of the stacking artifacts. And then also going to take the image and do a color calibration. I'll go ahead and do a photometric color calibra photo calibration. Uh, I have put an N51, we'll go ahead and find that. So I'm gonna put on the, the focal length of my telescope, which is, which is 2032. 
and the pixel size is 4.63 and then I'll click OK. All right. And it has enough photometric photo calibration and everything looks a lot better now. All right. So the next step is going to be stretching it again using the star tools because I don't want the stars to get super bloated more bloated than what's in the luminance filter because that will create problems later on. So I'm going to go ahead and do the star net star removal again. Again, we're going to pre-stretch the image and recompose the stars on completion. And it'll take a little bit to do. And then it has, again, the same two histograms. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and click apply and then close. And we've got a nice stretched image. Again, I do want to do a background extraction. So I'll do the same thing as I did before, and it's done, a, it's done a decent job. Okay, so now we've got the color with the background extraction extracted. Let's go ahead and see if we can maybe increase the color a little bit of the image, and then take this background factor and move it up so that it's not increasing the color of the background and just the galaxy itself. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna save this as the RGB image. We'll save this as a tip file again. Okay, now I'm going to go back into GIMP and open up that RGB image. Okay, here we have the RGB image, and we want to take this sharpened luminance layer and add it and paste it into here. Add it as a new layer, and then we want to align it up. So because both of these have been kind of registered with serial, you shouldn't have to do any rotating. Just kind of line up the stars so that when you blink between the layers, the stars don't move. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, so I've zoomed out. And what I want to do is move this layer on top of this. We'll call this one the luminous layer. And this one RGB. And we will turn this mode instead of normal. We're going to go ahead and go down to LCH color. And what you can see here is that it has combined with the luminance layer to create a color image. And I think that looks that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. Um, now, if we zoom in, you can see there's a lot of color noise, and that's due to this RGB layer. So what we can do is we can add a layer mask. We'll just make it full transparency for now. What we're going to do is we're going to be pasting in this luminance layer as a mask for the RGB layer. And so let's go ahead and do layer, layer to image size. So we get a, we make sure that it's copying and pasting exactly. And we'll do the same thing for this layer, layer to image size. We take the luminous layer and copy it and then click the layer mask and then paste. Now it's going to give us a floating selection. All we have to do now, because we've clicked the luminous layer, we have to right click the, the floating selection and go anchor layer. And what the stretching is going to do is anywhere that there's black on this luminance layer, it's not going to let the RGB layer show through. Anything that's white, it will. So what we want to do is we kind of want to stretch this so that the, the stars and the galaxy are pretty white and the background is, is very black. So let's go ahead and, and do that in level and curves. We'll create a couple of anchor points and then click on the stars and the galaxy, and we can just move this all the way up as much as we as much as we want to. Okay, making sure that we're not stretching the background too much. And if we stretch a background even too much, we can just take it and, and take it down. We click OK. We click Alt and click on the mask. And we can deactivate it. And what we see is that there's color for the galaxy and for the stars, but there is, when we zoom into the background, it's still black and white, which is which is what we want. Now I think that looks like a like a like a pretty nice image to me. However, we can still clean up some of this salt and pepper background. I'm going to go ahead and go to um, filters, enhance, wave wavelet decompose. Generally, five scales is enough, so we can go ahead and click OK. And it's going to create the wavelets for us. Now, a lot of the uh, the noise is in this first scale. So what we can do, we zoom out, 
Let's deactivate our color layer just so we can get a better idea of what's going on in the luminance layer. If we take this and we apply a Gaussian blur, then what you'll see, zoom in so you can see it, is it's smoothing out some of that noise. We can click OK, and then we can merge the layer group to merge that decomposition. And now we have some noise reduction on this layer. But we still have some dust spots. And so a great tool in GIMP to use to get rid to, to kind of heal a selection is heal selection tool. And this is not a tool that is natively part of GIMP. You're going to have to download it. It's a plugin for GIMP. It's called Resynthesizer. And I'll just pull up pull up the, the website for you to look at. I'll have a link in the description of how to install it into GIMP. But it's a really powerful tool and basically clone out large parts of um, an image that you don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and make a selection around some of these dust spots. So here's a dust spot. Make sure I don't get the star. Click Enter. And then I'm going to go to Filters, Enhance, Heal Transparency. And then you can just leave it, leave the defaults here. Click OK. It'll start to replace that um, selection with what's around it. And so we can see a before and after. This is where the dust spot was. After the heal selection, it's really smoothed out that dust spot. We can do the same thing for here. So we have a dust spot around here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this to it here as well. The defaults are usually good enough. And you can see the before and the after. Now, one thing that you might want to do is apply a high pass filter to the data. A high pass filter some, can sometimes just make things pop a little bit more. So duplicate the luminance layer that has the noise reduction to it. Uh, I can just do Control Shift and D on my computer. And I'll go to filters, enhance, and then high pass. And then generally you want to increase the contrast quite a bit, increase the standard deviation also quite a bit, just until you until you see a very high contrasty image, click OK and then move down here, change the mode of the layer to soft light. So we want to decrease the opacity of this. And what that does is it just makes the image pop a little bit more. Again, that might still be a little bit too strong, but I'll decrease it down to 25%. It has also brightened up the stars a little bit. So let's go ahead and add another layer mask. And we'll do full transparency again. And what I want to do is take a brush, a white brush, and over the galaxy, the parts that I want to pop out, just start painting over it. Again, make sure that the layer mask is, collected, is selected and start painting white on the layer mask of the areas that you want to pop out. All right, that looks pretty good. So now if I toggle on back and forth, we can see the difference. Right, that looks nice. And what I'm going to do is create a new layer from all the visible layers. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just darken up the background just a little bit. I want to make sure that all my channels are aligned, which they are. And then go ahead and just bring the background slider down just a little bit. All right, that looks pretty nice. Just make sure there are no obvious defects. Looks pretty good. And the final thing we want to do is just apply a general noise reduction across the whole image. So we're going to duplicate this layer, Control Shift D. And again, you want to install a program called Gimmick. And Gimmick has a, a lot of very useful plugins and a lot of good noise reduction plugins. So let me just bring you over to a, a website that will show you how to install it into Gimp if you haven't already. Uh, and again, this will be linked in the description. Go to go to filters, 
Gmik, and I think I'm pronouncing that right, and then a window will pop up. And what I'm looking here is there's this guy named Ian, I'm not sure who he is, but he made a whole bunch of noise reduction filters that work really well. And the one I've been using is Noise Reduction 2019. If I just scroll around the image, you can see how it's just applying a little, little bit of soft noise reduction. I generally keep this as uh, defaults, uh, and I just will apply it to the layer. So I'll just click OK. All right, so if we, we can toggle on and off and see that there's been some noise reduction on the image. Look at the darker spots. You can see that a lot of the noise has gone away. OK, one last thing that you can do if you want to is try to smooth out the background a little bit. So if I zoom in, you can see they're not very smooth. So you can do if you want, go to into curves. And we're going to select background that is pretty dark, move up to the galaxy, select a couple of places in the galaxy to have some anchor points that are a little bit lighter, move the dark points up a little bit, stretch them up, okay? And that will lighten the background, which is fine. And it'll also smooth out the background a lot. So if we remove this layer, if I make this layer invisible, you can see that all of this dirtiness in the background has basically gone away. That makes for a nice, clean image. OK, well, I think I think that's about it for this image. I'm going to go ahead and export it. And let's look at the final result.